Here's the season for weddings. Uh, welcome to DXB today and tonight we got ourselves uh, something of a weddings special for you to celebrate uh, exactly that season. Let's have a little look and see what's coming up. Weddings and sustainability. It's actually a thing. We talk to wedding planners and real life brides. Not only that, Katie went to check out the conservatory to check out some fantastic fragrances and some wonderful vibes. Now that's all coming up uh, right here on DXB today. Welcome one and all as we dive in to what is a growing industry here? Are we surprised that Dubai is ranked as one of the world's most popular wedding destinations? I mean, it's a gorgeous wedding destination, but Tom, we have to talk to you. I think you're only the only one here that's actually married. <laughs> Tell us about your wedding. What did you do? Was it uh, fairy tale? Are we, uh, am I the only one with skin in the game, as yeah. they say? In yeah, this one? exactly. So school us, please. I would like to say that I had contributed massively to the uh, Dubai wedding industry, but I got married in the UK. Um, <laughs> did the engagement part of it here uh, at one of the well known hotels uh, in Dubai but didn't take advantage. That's not to say the number of my friends haven't. And look, I know I bang on about the fact I've been here for what, over 20 years now, but it's the growth of the wedding industry that really has, uh, I've found it fascinating down the years. Um, it really has become a booming industry. And I love the fact that uh, the wedding industry here, we know that there's lots of people from different backgrounds and cultures and the wedding industry's had to catch up with that. So they do Arabic weddings, Indian weddings, Filipino weddings, even there's something for everybody here, I reckon. Mm. And you've got to make some big calls at the moment as well. Uh, obviously, last week we saw some uh, intemperate weather, so it's the old uh, indoor <laughs> or outdoor wedding. You've got to make that call, haven't you? You know what's strange to me? It's not the fact that it's Dubai is a massive wedding destination and it's a destination wedding destination as well. Um, it, we are in the most Instagrammable city in the world, so I'm not surprised about that. But what surprised me is the fact that people get married here in the summer, yeah. between May and August, you know, when we would never dare to step out the house. So that was very interesting. You could do a wedding in Ski Dubai. That's true. <laughs> but that that's funny true. you should say that because, uh, you know, one thing that we have been hearing a lot of is unique weddings. People are looking to do something, things a little bit differently, you know, be that in a plane above Dubai or using uh, some of the, 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 the adventure sort of uh, areas and, and pastimes that are available here. So everyone's looking for something a little unique. And you just mentioned social media there. And I think that is part and parcel of why Dubai, the UAE, has become such a go-to place for weddings at the moment. People want that clicks, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Instagram worthy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Right, it's not just us today, do we? I believe we've got an amazing guest co-host that can tell us all about this, so let's discover who that is. Hi, my name's Rhiannon Downey Hurst, founder of Bride Club ME, and I cannot wait to join you in the studio today. Now, Rhiannon will join us right here in the studio in just a few minutes. But before that, Katie had the lucky chance to check out a unique afternoon tea experience at the conservatory at the Western Mina Siahi Beach Resort, paired with delicacies and exquisite fragrances. Let's take a look. Today I'm in the beautiful conservatory at the Western Dubai Mina Siahi because I'm going to experience their brand new afternoon tea in collaboration with a Parisian fragrance house. So hang on, how do you combine fragrance with afternoon tea? Well, I'm going to find out. Let's go. First of all, before we go into the partnership with this wonderful afternoon tea, tell me more about why you started Maison 21 Grams. So there is a beautiful story behind the scene. Uh, so 21 Grams is supposed to be the weight of your soul. So at Maison, we encapsulate the scent of your soul in a 21 gram bottle. Uh, the whole concept was to bring back creativity and to empower everybody to create his own scent. So tell me, does the fragrance come first or does the food come first? first. The, the fragrance came first. Uh, we had a meeting with the chef and I always come with a mallet with a lot of scent uh, ingredient and I, I just give blind tests. What do you think? And I, you saw the emotion of the, in the eyes of the people. So he, he, he loved tonka, he loved vanilla and, and, and so we smell a lot of things and, and very fast we find what we want to do and then I came back and he created for me his interpretation so we did the testing 
And after I did the final perfume, I, I rewore. Now, we know here in the Middle East that scent and fragrance is so important. So, was there another reason why you decided to do this collaboration here in Dubai? No, it's just pure pleasure, you know, to take a bit the brown out of the traditional shop. I, I, I think the, the choosing a scent could be a bit boring, you know, in the big department store. And I want to bring education also. I think a lot of people, when they buy a perfume, they don't really know what is inside. So when you will come here, you will understand what is a beautiful bergamot, what is a natural vanilla, what is tonka bean. So it's also to bring education because I, I believe the fifth sense is one of the most important. We've spoken far too much and I want to dig into some of these. Yes. I'm going to go for one of the more simple ones to eat. So which one do you recommend? Tonka, out the tonka. It will be a, a discovery for, for okay. you. So I, I don't know if you have tried tonka before. Yeah, I don't think so. It's a little bean and you can use it on a creme brulee also. Uh, that's a beautiful uh, ingredient, very unique. Very. Uh, so I need to give you the scent now. <laughs> oh, wow. But I want you to try the natural vanilla. Yes, please. Uh, all the product you buy are made with artificial vanilla. So you're going to rediscover what is a real vanilla. So $20,000 a kilo, so that's gold. <laughs> Are we ready to smell what $20,000 a kilo smells like, ready? Can you see? This oh, like it's almost like, you know when something is strawberry flavoured, but it doesn't actually taste like strawberry. Okay. But I wanted to know which one of, of, the, of the patisserie is, would I have with this scent? So the, the vanilla is uh, coming from this tart, mm. the cream with the vanilla. Uh, yeah, you should try, and you have a bit of uh, bergamot also inside. I'm honestly blown away. I was, I'm absolutely fascinated by it. And obviously the setting here in the conservatory is just beautiful. Joanna, thank you so much. And really congratulations with this. And it, it's fantastic. We hope to see you back in Dubai again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful collaboration. Kate's getting all the good gigs as usual. Uh, thanks to Katie for that. Right, today's guest co-host is a multipreneur and an expert in the wedding industry, the founder of the UAE's leading online wedding website for brides and grooms, of course. Please welcome Rhiannon Downey-Hurst, founder of Bride Club Middle East to the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Great to have you on board. Listen, you were, I'm sure you were listening intently to that little chat we had a minute ago about uh, our sort of take on the wedding industry here. A destination weddings on the up. You're the best person to ask. Well, destination weddings by 2027 is estimated to be worth $80 billion. So it is a massive industry. And the UAE, Dubai, of course, is a destination that is on the minds of brides and grooms across the globe and for many reasons. Oh, give us a few of those reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Geographically, it's well placed. Um, if you can imagine, a lot of the expatriates here in the UAE are from all over the world. So they've got guests flying in from everywhere. Um, you've got luxury, you've got beaches, you've got cityscapes, you've even got gardens, you've got terraces, you've got loads of activities for your guests to do and hotels that can accommodate um, all tastes, all ethnicities, all religions, well, most religions, so yes. I mean, the desert weddings as well are absolutely gorgeous. But I know that a few years ago, people were often flying out of Dubai to get married. Is there a reason it's only up now? Has the law changed? Yeah, so, I mean, people obviously still do have destination weddings outside of the UAE, but now that weddings are legal in many Emirates for expatriates here, um, and also tourists, um, it's on the rise. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the domestic brides are staying here to have their weddings and, and this is a great reason, you know, you can legally get married here and also have your blessing ceremony. We were talking earlier about, you know, the, the onset of social media and how, how important that is for those getting wed these days as well to uh, record those special memories. Um, yes, we want to talk about the industry in all its guises. Come on, let's cut to the quick. <laughs> Most outrageous demands. Everyone wants to personalise theirs, don't they? Uh, I mean, you know, there are lots of outrageous demands and, you know, the crazy thing about the UAE <laughs> is that usually it can happen. Yeah, there's no such thing as no. <laughs> right, there's no such, I mean, I, I heard someone talking um, in a specific emirate the other day about, you know, if you want 20 camels to escort you from the airport to the hotel, they can make it happen. I'm not too sure logistically how that would work, but, <laughs> you know, usually if there's a request, they will try and make it happen, mm. you know. 
So hot air balloons, um, there've been um, skydiving proposals, not necessarily weddings, but proposals. <laughs> That'd be good, a skydiving wedding. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, can you, yeah, but the thing is that you've got big risks because of the weather. Yeah, of course. And That's a scuba dive wedding. Oh, interesting. Deep dive Dubai, why, <laughs> why not? not? Why not? Now, Rhiannon, for our viewers that maybe are thinking about getting hitched or on their journey, what are some of the mistakes um, that they could avoid making when it comes to planning a wedding in Dubai? Whew, um, not hiring a wedding planner, I would say, is, is one. But I guess if you're very pedantic and organised like myself, you will be okay. But if you're someone that get, gets easily overwhelmed, very stressed, and you can hire a wedding planner, I would recommend that. Um, number two, consider the weather. You know, especially if you're a destination bride planning your wedding in the UAE, the amount of inquiries we get from couples that want to have beach weddings in June. Mm. And I have to educate them, you know, maybe you need to rethink that. So consider the weather um, and remember logistics and remember things such as your sound and light. This is often forgotten when you're budgeting. You know, people think about the aesthetics of pretty things like flowers, the dress, but then they kind of get hit with, oh my goodness, my guests are not going to be able to see what they're eating at my outside wedding. So consider things like lighting, seating, etc. Speaking of budgeting, you yeah. know, the UAE is a place where you can get things very good price, very affordable, but also there seems to be no cap on how much you can spend on things. Yeah. What, what's the craziest, most expensive, lavish wedding that you've seen? <laughs> Describe um, it, you'd have to say who it was. <laughs> uh, I would say the Indian destination wedding market spend an absolute fortune on their weddings here in, in the UAE. Um, you know, for many reasons, they often have three day celebrations, three, four day celebrations. They fly over all of their guests, so it's hotel bookouts. Um, and they have various entertainment, um, they have gift hampers that people receive when they arrive. It's, it's expensive mm. having an Indian wedding, so. And they like the lavish weddings as well, <laughs> for sure. Listen, I know of the first rule of Fight Club, but what's the first rule of Bride Club? <laughs> um, uh, select your date. Right. So. I thought the bride is always right. <laughs> <laughs> the bride is always right, yeah. Happy wife, happy life. Um, that's a good start. But uh, yeah, so select your date and, and start budgeting. Just create a basic budget, budget spreadsheet and really, you know, because people do, uh, you know, you can't blame them. Hopefully it's their first wedding and their only wedding. They've never planned a wedding before, so they're not going to know what things cost. So do research and of course use platforms like mine, you know, no pitch there, but we're there to help. That's the reason I started Bride Club mm -hmm. 10 years ago, because I was a bride getting married here in the UAE and I was becoming very, very stressed and I saw a gap in the market and decided to fix it basically. Mm -hmm. Now, Rhiannon, we will talk to you in just a minute. Don't go anywhere because after the break, we talk to a co-founder of a bridal wear company about the bridal gown trends in the UAE. So stay tuned.